All right, guys, it is that time again, new guitar day, but this one is an extra special one. Uh, this is one of my dream guitars that I've been looking for for a very long time. And uh, shout out to the guys at CNM in uh, Louisiana. They hooked me up with this. Um, we're gonna talk about it in just a few minutes, why this guitar is so rare. Uh, also, shout out to CNM. They did an amazing job boxing up. This, this thing was double boxed, tons of extra bubble wrap uh, to make sure that this thing got here to me in one piece. So if there's anything wrong with it, um, it's UPS's fault. <laughs> so, all right. So anyway, let's open it up and we'll show you what it is. This is my first time to actually look at it other than in pictures. So I'm hoping this thing is as it looked like on the photos. This is a PRS, as you can tell from the case, a PRS Modern Eagle 5. Oh, wow. Oh my God, look at that figuring. All right, so why is this my dream guitar? Oh, wow, look at that. It's got some um, figuring even on the headstock with the uh, rosewood. Okay, so Modern Eagle 5. This is a really unique guitar. If you look at PRS's website, this guitar is not in their lineup. Um, it is a guitar that they come out with once every, I don't know, three or four years, uh, maybe more, whenever Paul and the team have something new to showcase. And they do these guitars as very limited special runs for special occasions. So it is not a guitar that is normally in the lineup. And every time they come out, you've got to almost win the lottery just to have the right to buy one. It, it's, it's a little bit crazy. This particular one, the, the fifth edition, Modern Eagle 5, as you can see there, this one actually came out in three separate phases. Uh, phase one was the private stock, which this one is not. Now, the private stocks, those things sold for... I was going to say between twelve and fifteen thousand dollars, and each dealer got to get like one or two of them. I think they only made one hundred and twenty of them. Andertons has a video on it if you want to find that. Uh, I'll try to put a link in the description. And those were ones where the dealers actually went to this location. They had like all the pieces of wood laid out on tables and each dealer could pick out individual pieces of wood that they wanted to have their guitars made with and what colors they wanted them finished with and everything. So there was only 120 of those. Those things sell for over $20,000 now, if you can even find them used. Um, Cause again, there was only 120 of them made. Then the second phase was called the PRS experience. If you don't know, PRS does this customer appreciation thing. Um, I think it's every year where people will actually go to Stevensville, Maryland, and um, the dealers get to, they do like barbecues and all this kind of stuff. And occasionally they'll have like a special guitar there that, de that the dealers can buy. So they did a Modern Eagle 5 for those as well, but those only came out in two colors. The dealers did not have a choice in those. Uh, it had a charcoal burst, and then there was like a river blue burst or something. And they did 100 of each, so a, a grand total of 200 guitars. Um, those... Although they sell for a decent amount of money still, those are not nearly as desirable because, um, you know, there's a hundred of each color. So they're basically exactly the same. Uh, so they're not nearly as rare. And then phase three, which is what this guitar is, is a core model instead of a private stock. But it's obviously, as you can tell here, it's a 10 top. So um, if you're familiar with PRS, you probably already know this, but you have private stock, which is the top of the line. That, that's basically... Whenever Paul and the team find exotic woods, they get to take their pick first, and then um, everything else goes to the core line. Now, in the core line, there's three separate levels. So you have the uh, regular core, you have the wood library, which is like the best woods, the most figured woods, and then there's the ten top, which uh, for, I think in an interview with Paul, I think he said that that basically means the top 10% of the wood library woods. And that's what this one is. This is a 10 top. So there's not really that much difference between a 10 top and a private stock 
other than the private stock might have just a slight bit more figuring. Like this might be considered like a quadruple A, whereas the private stock's like a 5A or something like that. But anyway, so phase three was the dealers could actually customize their own just like they did on the private stocks. The only difference is they didn't like go to a location where they would walk around and pick out individual pieces of wood. They just placed an order with PRS and said, okay, I want you know, a mahogany body, a quilted maple or a flame maple. I want a rosewood fretboard, whatever. They would fill out all their, their specifications, and then PRS would make it for them. And I haven't heard the exact number of how many of these were made in phase three, but I've heard it was something similar to the, the first run. So there's maybe, you know, 200 of these. But what makes these more unique than the PRS experience ones is each dealer got to customize their own specs, just like they did for the private stocks. So this guitar here is really the one that I wanted because it's essentially a private stock guitar without the eagle on the headstock. Um, you know, the, the PRS Experience guitars, it's essentially the same electronics and same woods, but there's a hundred blue ones and a hundred charcoal ones, so they're not nearly as unique. Whereas, like, this one here was specced out by CNM in Louisiana, so it's the only one like this. You know, unless there just happens to be another dealer somewhere that just happened to spec out the exact same everything. Uh, but otherwise, these are all one-offs, just like the private stocks are but they're far less expensive. So instead of these being $15,000 when they were brand new, like the private stocks were, these were more in the uh, five to $7,000 range, depending on you know, how fancy you got it and how many things you spec'd out with it. So um, I think when I did a search online, I could only find about 27 of these currently for sale on Reverb. Uh, I believe about 25 of them are, are still new, so there's not many left. Most of the dealers uh, that got these, you know, they're not going to wheel and deal on these because they're so rare, so they're hanging on to them until they find a buyer. Um, and then I think outside of Reverb, I think I found like another 20 or 25 that I could find for sale on various websites. So there's not many out there. I've heard there's maybe between 150 or 200 of these. So this is probably now one of the most rare guitars that I own. But what I loved about this, out of all those 50 that I found online, I'd say 90% of them had mahogany, ba mahogany bodies with maple caps, and most of them were flame maple caps. There's a few that had quilted maple like this. This is an, an amber finish, and it's probably hard to see on the camera, but this thing just dances. It, it reflects the light so well. It just, it's an amazing top. So this is the quilted maple top, but what I really liked about this is this is one of only about six or seven that I have found online so far that did not use mahogany, that used swamp ash for the body. And that is just awesome. A, a one-piece swamp ash body, solid swamp ash. And I really like that because I've got a ton of mahogany guitars. I mean, every Les Paul's got a mahogany body. Um, my PRS S2 is a mahogany body. My... SE is a mahogany body, so I really like having something a little different on this particular one. So this is extremely rare. Uh, out of the you know, 150 or 200 of these that, I, that were made, very few of them had swamp ash. And then I also love that this one has the satin flame maple neck on it. Uh, most of the ones that I've seen out of the you know, two, 300 of these between even the private stocks and the, and the PRS Experience versions Almost all of them had gloss necks, uh, and I just don't care for gloss necks very much. I far prefer satin necks, so I was really excited that this one has a really nice flame maple figuring, but with satin on the neck. And then you can see up here, it's a 10 top, and you can see right there. And then the fretboard on this one is also a little unique. So most of the rosewood ones that I've seen are Indian rosewood or Honduran rosewood, and I think a couple of them had African rosewood. This is one of the few ones left, uh, and there were, there were some other modern eagles that had it as well that I saw that used Brazilian rosewood. So the entire neck is Brazilian rosewood, and the headstock, it's a flame maple headstock with Brazilian rosewood top or a cap on it. And Brazilian rosewood, if you don't know, is really hard to find anymore. Uh, there's all kinds of laws that you can't harvest it anymore, and you can't sell it anymore. And 
there's even restrictions on if you want to sell these guitars. So I'm guessing when we look in here, there will probably be some kind of literature about the, yep, yep, right there, look at that. Is this the rose? Yes, this is. Okay, so talking about the Brazilian rosewood was harvested before June 1992. So any rosewood that was harvested after that is essentially illegal to have. And so you have to have the certificate because if I ever sell this guitar, which I don't plan on doing, but if I ever do, this piece of paper has to follow this guitar around. If you don't have certification, now obviously you could always call PRS and give them a serial number and they could reproduce it for you if you lost this. But if you ever want to sell this guitar, you have to have this to go with it to verify that the Brazilian rosewood that is on your guitar is not illegal. Because uh, if it is illegal, they can confiscate your guitar. So kind of crazy and just, again, shows you how insanely rare this is. And I got really lucky with mine that uh, it's even got some figuring. You know, a lot of these rosewood ones, uh, they're just solid. This one's got some really nice figuring in it, which makes it even a little bit more unique. Uh, and then the last thing that they specced out on this, you'll notice the birds are not the standard perloid or um, acrylics. This one has uh, both abalone and pearl uh, for each of the birds. So it's combination. So you'll notice like the outlines and then the, the filling on each one. So really beautiful uh, setup. Now the electronics on these are kind of insane as well. So it's got the, you know, the core model uh, bridge with the brass nuts. The humbuckers here, though, I thought these were 5815s. That's kind of the, uh, the 5815 LTs, the low turns. That's the one that they put on a lot of their uh, high-end private stock guitars and core model guitars. But no, these are a pickup that's called the MEV for Modern Eagle 5, but it's modeled after the... Uh, humbuckers on the Paul's guitar, which is why you kind of see it's got the same style of pickup rings, and the pickups themselves uh, aren't don't have just the normal uh, rounded edges on it like most of the normal humbuckers do. So these are modeled after the Paul's guitar. They are the TCI uh, pickups, so that makes them a little bit <clears throat> better sounding when you coil split them. So it's got a coil split for the neck and the bridge right here, and when you coil split them, Normally what happens is on a normal guitar when you quill split it just deactivates one of the bobbins But because there's magnets in there it can still affect the other one even if only one bobbin is active So you get coil you get single coil like tones, but it's not exactly the same uh, but with the TCI's they've um, They found a way to alter that so that it gives you a true single coil uh, without the other magnet affecting it and then obviously in the middle, you've got a, a true single coil, a regular single coil. So HSH in and of itself with coil splits, that's not that unique, right? But what makes this one a little bit more unique is that in addition to the coil splits, it also has a push-pull pot here on the tone, and that enables you to activate all three pickups at once, whereas you know with a, a standard five-way switch, you usually can only do the combinations of the pickups that are right next to each other next to each other. So that push pull enables you to access just the two outside or all three at once. So if you're counting at home between the coil splits and the ability to activate all of them, that's 17 pickup combinations. But wait, there's more. This odd little toggle down here is a new add-on that they did this year for the Modern Angle 5 and that toggles between 250k and 500k pots. So inside here, they figured out some way of doing the electronics to change the uh, impedance of the pots so that you can go back and forth. Uh, obviously, 500K is what's traditionally used on humbuckers. 250K is what's traditionally used on single coils. So if you just have 500K pots or just have 250K pots, that's fine. But then when you coil split them, you're not really using the optimal impedance for those pickups. So with this switch here, you can toggle. So if, for example, if I've got uh, this up and I'm in single coil mode, so I've got all three single coils, then I can flip this switch and instead of having 500k, I've now got 250k, so it's going to sound more like a normal Strat. 
Whereas if I've got it in humbucker mode, I can put this back to 500K and it's gonna sound like a Les Paul or like a, like a true humbucker instead of a humbucker that's running through 250K pots. Uh, so that's really, really uh, unique as well. And I've heard one or two people online saying that there's a way, this, this one doesn't have it because it just came stock from PRS like this, but you can, it's got a treble bleed circuit on the volume pot, but you can take this and add a push-pull to it. Right now it's not a push-pull, it's just a station, uh, stationary pot. You can add a push-pull here and enable you to toggle between serial humbucker or parallel humbucker to just you know add in a few more tonal options for you. So just an insane amount of options that you have with this guitar. Um, you can get Strat sounds, Les Paul sounds, Tele sounds, you name it. Uh, any combination you can think of, you can come up with, with this guitar. Um, and these these uh, humbuckers too, uh, from the, I'm excited to try these because from the demo that I saw on PRS's website and on Anderson's website, these sound really crisp and clear, uh, very similar to the 5815 LTs. Uh, very clear and articulate, which is what I prefer uh, in my pickups. You know, when you, some people like the the warm and dirty tones, which is great, but I always feel like it's really easy to take a a really bright and clear pickup and make it sound warm and dirty with a pedal or an amp than it is to take a pickup that's really warm and dirty already and try to make it sound bright and crisp and clear. So I always like to get pickups as clear and bright and articulate as possible and then just use pedals to get the tones that I want. So that's it. That is the guitar. Uh, super excited. It's like a, a dream guitar of mine. Uh, we're going to see how this compares to my USA S2 model and my uh, SE in, as far as tone. I mean, in, in terms of build quality and appearance, this thing wins hands down, of course. But we're going to plug it in and, and try out some tones, and I'll do a separate video for that because this video is already getting too long. And then in here, all we have is the basic uh, literature that they send with these. So we've got the tremolo arm, the adjustment tools for the tremolo and the truss rod, all that kind of stuff. Um, there's another Brazilian rosewood uh, disclaimer. That is a big deal, apparently. I had no idea before I saw those videos about that. Um, Warranty information, obviously. This I thought was kind of interesting, though. Not the not the sticker, but there's a guitar operations manual in here that lists all of the PRS models that you can have and what the different configurations and setups are. So obviously the Custom 24s, the Piezos, 2408s, the McCarty's. But if you look through this entire catalog, this just kind of shows you there is no mention of the Modern Eagle 5. I mean, every other possible guitar is on here. Paul's guitar, Santana's, DGT's, Tremonti's. I mean, everything they make, even Granger 4 or 5 string bass, like I haven't even seen those on, on the website in a while. The Silver Skies, of course, Fiore's. Everything's in here, but there is zero mention of a Modern Eagle 5, which just kind of shows you what an anomaly this guitar is, that it's not part of the normal PRS lineup. This is really just a a guitar that Paul decides to do once in a while when he wants to do something crazy. So it's kind of this little side project that just comes out once every four or five years or something like that. So I'm really excited that I was able to find one of these because whenever they come out with these, they only do a couple hundred and they usually get scooped up really quickly by collectors and, and people and uh, I usually cannot afford them. So the fact that I was able to find exactly the one that I wanted, not the phase one private stocks, those are too expensive, not the phase two PRS experience one, those are too common, uh, but the phase three where they're really, like basically like a private stock for 10 top money. Uh, that's exactly what I was looking for. Been hoping to find one of these for years and super excited that I finally got it. Anyway, just wanted to show you guys that. And I will be spending a lot of time with this in the future. If you guys have any questions about the Modern Eagle 5, uh, let me know. I've been doing a lot of research on it lately since I was able to purchase this one. Uh, so I'll do my best to answer your questions. Um, and if I don't know the answer, I'll try to find it for you. 
But anyway, thanks guys. Hope you have a good day and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.